Chapter 18 Two Pirates in a Furnace Any one other than a Malai would have undoubtedly broken his legs in such a jump, but Sandokan was as solid as an oak and had the agility of a primate. He landed in a flower bed, and no sooner had he hit the ground than he was back on his feet, Chris drawn, ready to defend himself. Fortunately, Yanez was there as well. The Portuguese immediately grabbed him by the shoulders and brusquely pushed him towards a grove of trees, saying, Run, you fool! Do you want to get shot? Let go of me, Yanez, said the pirate, overcome with emotion. Attack the villa! Four soldiers appeared at the window and quickly aimed their rifles. Save yourself, San Ocan, yelled Mariana. The pirate jumped ten paces and was greeted by a volley of rifle fire, a bullet just grazing his turban. He turned toward the villa, roared like a lion and emptied his rifle into the window, shattering the glass and striking a soldier in the forehead. This way, yelled Yanez, dragging him towards the wall. Rash fool! The door of the villa opened, and ten soldiers followed by as many turf bearers, spilling out into the garden. The Portuguese fired through the bushes. The sergeant in command of that small squad fell lifelessly to the ground. Run, little brother, said Yanez as the soldiers stopped to gather around their captain. I can't leave her alone, said Sanokan, his passion overcoming his reason. She told you to escape. Come, or I'll swear I'll carry you. Two soldiers appeared thirty paces to their right, just ahead of a large platoon. The two pirates hesitated no longer. They dove among the bushes and flower beds and ran towards the wall, dodging a barrage of rifle blasts. Go straight, little brother, said the Portuguese, quickly loading his carbine. Tomorrow we'll pay those soldiers back for every shot they fired at us. I'm afraid I've ruined everything, Yanez, the pirate said sadly. Why, my friend? Now that they know I'm here, they'll be twice as vigilant. We won't catch them off guard. I'm not denying that, but if the Prahus have arrived, we'll have a hundred tigers at our disposal. Who could resist such an attack? I'm afraid of what Lord James might do. What do you mean? He's the kind of man who'd kill his niece before he had to allow her to run off with me. Hell! exclaimed Yanez, scratching his forehead. I hadn't thought of that. He was about to stop, catch his breath, and ponder the problem when he spotted several silhouettes moving about in the dark. The British! he exclaimed. They found our tracks. We've got to get out of here, Sando Can. They headed deeper into the garden, sprinting towards the wall. The further they advanced, however, the more difficult the route became. Enormous trees blocked their every turn but barely slowed them down. Within minutes they reached the outskirts of that small forest and dove in among clumps of roses and peonies, quickly glancing about to get their bearings. They ran past the Chinese gazebo, darted in among the flowerbeds, and then raced to the wall, keeping themselves hidden from the many soldiers now scouring the ground. Careful, Sandokan, said Yanis, holding his friend back as he was about to hurl himself over the wall. The shots could have attracted the soldiers we spotted going out on patrol. Could they have come back so soon? Sandokan strained his ears, but did not hear anything save for the rustling of leaves. Hear something? he asked. I thought I had heard a branch snap on the other side of the wall. It could have been an animal. It could have been soldiers. I'd swear I heard voices. I bet the diamond in the hilt of my crisp against a ruby they are redcoats behind this wall waiting to ambush us. You do remember those troops we spotted heading out into the jungle? Yes, Yanez. Fear not. They aren't going to capture us just yet. You have a plan? First we have to make sure the path is clear. Without making a sound, Sanokan stood up, scanned the trees, then climbed the wall with the agility of a cat. He had just reached the top when he heard several whispers coming from the other side. Yanez was right, he murmured. He bent down and scanned the trees on the other side of the wall, despite the profound darkness. He could make out the dim silhouettes of soldiers gathered near the base of the colossal Kasurian. He hurried down and reached Yanez, who had not moved a single step. 
You are right, he said. There are men waiting to ambush us on the other side of this wall. Are there many? About half a dozen of them. By Jupiter! What shall we do, Yanez? We've got to get out of here. We'll have to find another escape route. It's too late for that. Poor Mariana. She may think we've been caught and killed. Let's turn our thoughts away from the young woman for the moment. We're the ones running the greater risk right now. Let's get out of here. Quiet, Sanokan. Hear that? Someone's talking. Two voices, one rough, the other commanding, were engaged in conversation on the other side of the wall. The wind, blowing from the forest, carried their words to the pirate's ears. I can assure you, said the commanding voice, the pirates entered the garden planning to attack the villa. I find that hard to believe, Sergeant Bow, replied the other. Do you think our men were shooting just for the fun of it? Reason it out, Willis. Well, they won't escape. Let's hope not. There are thirty-six of us. We can secure the entire wall and regroup at the first signal. Have the men spread out and tell them to keep their eyes open. We're probably dealing with the Tiger of Malaysia. They heard leaves rustle and branches snap. Then all fell silent. It doesn't bode well, murmured Yanez, turning towards Sanokan. We're about to be surrounded, little brother. If we aren't careful, we'll fall right into their trap. Quiet, whispered the tiger of Malaysia. Listen. The commanding voice was speaking again. This is your post, Bob. I'll set up an ambush behind that camp four tree. Load your rifle and keep your eyes on the wall. Don't worry, Sergeant, replied Bob. You really think we're dealing with the tiger of Malaysia? That cutting pirate has fallen madly in love with Lord Guianoc's niece. She's been promised to Lord Rosenthal, and you can bet Sandokan's not going to take that lying down. I'm sure he came here tonight to make off with her. But how could they have landed without being spotted by one of our cruisers? He probably took advantage of the hurricane. I heard a few brahus have been sighted sailing away from our island. What audacity! Oh, they're just getting started. The Tiger of Malaysia will give us quite a challenge, Bob. He's the most cunning man I've ever met. He won't escape us this time. If he's in the garden, he won't get out so easily. Enough talk for now. Man your post, Bob. Three rifles every hundred meters may be enough to stop the Tiger of Malaysia and his friend. Don't forget there's a thousand pounds reward if we kill the pirate. A good sum, by God, said Yanis, smiling. Lord James thinks highly of you, little brother. I doubt they'll be spending any time soon, replied Sandokan. He got up, turned his head towards the park, and spotted several bright dots fitting among the flower beds off in the distance. The soldiers that had been in the villa had lost the pirate's trail and were looking about randomly, waiting for dawn to undertake a more detailed search. We have nothing to fear for the moment, he said. Shall we try another path? asked Yanez. This garden is vast. The entire wall may not be guarded. No, my friend. If they spot us, we'll have forty soldiers at our back, and it won't be easy to escape their fire. We'd be, be better off finding a place to hide. Any ideas? Come with me, Yanez. You've warned me repeatedly not to act like a madman, and now I'll show you just how cautious I can be. If they killed me, Mariana will not survive my death. Let's not do anything rash. Won't the soldiers find us? I don't think so. He won't stay here for very long. Whatever happens, we'll be gone by tomorrow night. Come, Yanis, I just thought of the perfect hiding place. Keeping themselves hidden among the flower beds, the two pirates got up, slung their carbines around their shoulders, and headed for the wall. Sanokan led his friend across a section of garden and took him to a one-story building, a hothouse about five hundred paces from Lord Guianoc's villa. Without making a sound, he silently opened the door and entered, feeling about with his hands to get his bearings. "'Where are we going?' asked Yanez. "'Light a match,' replied Sandokan. "'Won't they see the light from outside?' "'There's no danger. We're surrounded by a thick grove of plants.' Yanez reached into his pocket, pulled out a small box, and quickly lit a match. The room was full of flowering plants that filled the air with delightful fragrances. Bamboo tables and chairs peered from among the many large vases stacked in tidy rows. "'We're going to hide in here?' asked Yanis. "'This place doesn't seem very safe to me. 
The soldiers will look around in here for sure. They'll check everywhere to earn those thousand pounds Lord James is offering for your capture. I'm not saying they won't come. Then they'll catch us. I wouldn't be so sure, Yanez. What do you mean? They won't look for us in the furnace. Yanez laughed as a smile spread across his face. In that furnace? he exclaimed. Yes, we'll hide in there. We'll come out blacker than coal, little brother. There has to be a ton of soot in that giant oven. We'll bathe later, Yanez, but... You can face the British on your own if you prefer. Well, there's really no choice, is there? replied Yanez, laughing. Let's have a look at our new home. I hope it's more comfortable than it looks. He opened the iron door, lit another match, paused to sneeze a couple of times, then went into the large furnace. Son of Kemp followed right behind him. The furnace was large enough for the two pirates to stand quite comfortably, but though it was spacious, it contained a large amount of ash and soot. Despite their dangerous predicament, the Portuguese, always in good humor, began to laugh hysterically. Whoever's going to believe that Sanokan, the dreaded tiger of Malaysia, sought refuge in a furnace, he said. By Jupiter, there's no doubt in my mind now, I'm sure we're going to escape. Don't talk so loudly, my friend, said Sanokan. They may hear us. Bah! They're probably still far off. They may be closer than you think. As we entered the hot house, I spotted two men poking about the flower beds just a few paces from us. Do you think they'll check this place as well? I'm certain of it. Hell! What if they check the furnace? We won't give up easily, Yanez. We're armed and can fight off any sudden attack. We don't have so much as a biscuit, Sanokan. I hope you aren't planning on eating this soot. And another thing. The walls of our fortress don't appear to be all that sturdy. You could probably smash through them with a couple of blows with a shovel. We'll attack before they can put a dent in these walls, said Sanokan, who, as always, had great confidence in his cunning and ability. We should get ourselves some food. We'll get some, Yanez. There are a few banana and pombo groves nearby. We'll go raid them. When? Quiet! I hear voices. You're making me nervous. Draw your gun and don't be afraid. Listen! Muffled voices reached their ears, growing louder as they drew nearer. Leaves rustled, and the pebbles on the path to the hothouse crunched beneath the soldiers' feet. Sanokan blew out the match, told Yanez not to move, then cautiously opened the metal door and peered out into the room. The hothouse was still dark, however, a couple of torches were visible through the glass, burning among the grove of banana trees growing along the path. As they drew nearer, he managed to make out six soldiers and two torch-bearers. "'Are they planning to visit the hothouse?' he whispered anxiously. He closed the hatch and reached Yanez's side just as a beam of light lit the interior of the little building. "'They're coming!' he whispered to his friend, who almost dared not to breathe. "'Be ready to attack. Is your gun loaded? My finger is on the tr trigger. Great. Draw your Chris as well.' The troops entered the hothouse, bathing every corner of the room in light. Sitting by the hatch, Sandokan watched as the soldiers moved the vases and chairs, searching every inch of the room. Despite all his courage, he could not suppress a shiver. If the soldiers were searching so meticulously, it's unlikely they would overlook the furnace's great size. The hatch could open at any moment. Sandokan quickly moved towards Yanis, who was huddled in a corner, half covered in ash and soot. Don't move, whispered Sanokan. They may not find us. Quiet, replied Yanis. Listen. Can that damn pirate have escaped, said a voice. Well, he couldn't have dug himself a tunnel out of here, replied another. That man is capable of doing anything, my friend, said a third. He isn't mere flesh and blood. He's one of the devil's own. I agree, Varez, replied the first voice, a slight tremble betraying its owner's fear. I saw him once, and it was enough. He's no ordinary man. He's a tiger. He attacked about fifty of our men and wasn't so much grazed by a single bullet. You're scaring me, Bob, said another soldier. Who wouldn't be afraid, replied Bob. I doubt Lord Weenock himself could best that demon's spawn. However that may be, we'll capture him. He can't escape. The garden is completely surrounded, and if he tries to climb the wall, he'll lose his hide. I'd wager two months' pay we capture him before sunset. You can't catch a ghost. He's no ghost, Bob. 
Didn't the man that destroyed his two prahu shoot him in the chest? Look, we and had the misfortune of curing the pirate's wounds, and he assured us the tiger is just as mortal as we are, and that he bled just like any other man. Are you telling me that ghosts can bleed? No. Then that pirate is nothing more than a ruffian, cunning and brave, admittedly, but still a scoundrel that deserves to be hung. Wretch, murmured Sandokan. If I weren't in here, I'd show you who I was. Now, continued the first voice, if you want to earn Lord Guianoc's thousand pounds, best we continue our search. He's not here. Let's look somewhere else. Wait, Bob. What about that furnace in the corner? It's large enough to hide a couple of men. Draw your weapon and let's check it out. Are you serious? said the soldier. Who do you think is in there? Not even a couple of pygmies could fit in that thing. Still best we make sure. Sonokan and Yen had moved as far back from the hatch as they could, crouching among the ash and soot to better conceal themselves from the soldiers' eyes. Seconds later the metal doors swung open and a ray of light looked up the interior. The soldier poked his head in but pulled it out immediately, sneezing uncontrollably, his face as black as coal. Sanokan had quickly cast a panful of soot at him, blinding the young man before he could spot them. To hell with whoever suggested I stick my head in this thing! Happy? There's nothing but soot in there, he exclaimed. It was rather silly, added another soldier. We're wasting valuable time. The tiger of Malaysia has to be in the garden. He's probably trying to climb the wall as we speak. Let's get out of here, they mumbled. We aren't getting any closer to that thousand pound reward by staying here. The soldiers quickly made their way out of the hothouse, noisily closing the door behind them. Their voices and footsteps were audible for a few more minutes, then all fell silent. When he could no longer hear any noise, the Portuguese let out a long sigh of relief. Bloody hell, he exclaimed. I feel like I've aged a hundred years in the past few minutes. I wouldn't have given a rupee for our hides. That soldier almost found us. All he had to do was peer in a little further and he would have seen us for sure. We should light a candle in honor of the Madonna of Pilar. I won't say that was a, a close one, replied Sanokan. When I saw that head a short distance from me, I saw red, and I do not know what kept me from firing. That would have been pure madness. There's nothing more to fear. They'll scour the garden looking for us and soon convince themselves we have somehow managed to escape. And when exactly are we going to leave? You aren't thinking of spending a year here, are you? Our prahus may be awaiting us at the mouth of the stream by now. I have no intention of staying here for much longer. There doesn't promise to be much in the way of food. We'll wait until the British relax their surveillance, then we'll make our escape. I too am dying to know if our men have arrived. Without their help it'll be impossible to free Mariana. Sanokan, my friend, let's go see if we can find something to chew on or at least wet our throats. Right behind you, Yanez, almost suffocating in that Asheville furnace, the Portuguese pushed his carbine forward, crept into the hatch, and jumped onto a nearby vase so as not to leave any soot prints on the floor. Sarokan copied those prudent maneuvers, and jumping from vase to vase, the two men reached the hot house. See anyone? he asked. It's still too dark outside. Excellent. Let's go raid those banana trees. They quickly headed to the small grove that grew along the path and picked enough bananas and pombos to satisfy their growling stomachs and quench their arduous throats. They were about to return to the hothouse when Sanokan halted suddenly. Wait here, Yanez, he said. I want to see where the soldiers are. It wouldn't be wise, replied the Portuguese. Let them look wherever they want. What's it matter to us? I have an idea. To hell with your ideas. We're not going to do anything else tonight. I've got to try, replied Sanokan. We may not have to wait until tomorrow. I'll only be gone a few minutes gave Yanez his rifle, drew his chris, and quickly went off to explore the area, taking great care to keep to the shadows. When he reached the last grove of banana trees, he spotted a row of torches off in the distance, moving towards the wall. Seems they're getting further away, he murmured. Let's see what's happening in Lord James's villa. Ah, if I could see my love, even if only for an instant, just to know she's safe. He stifled a sigh and headed towards the path being careful to keep himself hidden behind the trees and bushes. When he was in front of the villa, 
he halted in a grove of mango trees and quickly looked about. His heart raced at the sight of Mariana's window. It was still lit. If I could take her away, he murmured, fixing his eyes on the light through the, shining through the metal grate. He took three or four more steps, keeping close to the ground so as not to be spotted by any soldiers lurking nearby. Then he stopped again. A shadow passed in front of the light. It could only be Mariana. He was about to move forward when he lowered his eyes and spied a figure standing before the entrance of the, to the villa, a guard resting on his carbine. Has he seen me? he wondered. He hesitated for only a minute. Seeing the young woman's shadow pass behind the grate a second time, he abandoned all caution and headed towards her. He had gone ten paces when the guard suddenly leveled his weapon. Who goes there? he yelled. 